The noise is a real problem. It's an issue. And all I can think is, um, one thing is that our community, we were so caught up in the excitement of this progressive thing that we could be a part of, that we did not do our research. And we could have sent a group of people to go look at other sites and talk to neighbors and hear for ourselves. And we didn't. You know, we, we had these vi lots of presentations, lots of information. We all asked our questions. We all got our answers. And, but we trusted just a few people who were talking. I think the main thing with this one, the, this site is in the middle of a neighborhood. Like wind power is great, it has to be put in the right place and it can't be embedded in a neighborhood because there are already people there, there are families and investment in property, investment in life, and um, it's a loss for those people. There are several properties along the, at the border of uh, the wind site who sold their property. And there's a gorgeous post and beam home there that's deserted because no one could live there. And, uh, you know, they sold to Fox Island Wind and that was their prerogative, but that makes me sad. You know, as a community, we voted for this and, um, and now, you know, there are repercussions that we're all, that some of us have to live with. Many of us felt this was a good idea, I think for all the right reasons, and we still think that it is. However, I guess what I've learned is that the technology just isn't there yet, um, that the state regulations of saying that 45 decibels is a quiet zone, which I had no idea what that meant beforehand, um, on a really quiet uh, cove where you're really used to listening to the sound of your stream and you're used to hearing the birds and all those things that you just love. Um, when those things uh, are covered up by the sound of a windmill that sounds like, um, sounds like sort of a jet revving up, um, it's a big surprise when you discover, wait a minute, that's even less than uh, 45 decibels. Um, it is so loud in a rural area that I think that um, people really need to realize that. And it's, it's not that this can't work, it's just that we have to think more creatively about how it does work and find technological solutions to get rid of that grinding noise, which I guess is the nacelle, and um, maybe slow them down a little bit so that we're still saving money and keeping our rates the way we need to on this island, but at the same time um, making it so that uh, it can work for us. I feel like a lot of red flags went up for me early that um, unfortunately I didn't respond to, so that's my own sort of... Um, I have that weighing on my conscience a bit. Um, however, any time a project is fast-tracked through uh, a multi-million dollar project and the information presented is nothing but positive, there should be red flags that go up to anybody. And um, uh, here on the island, um, there was a very effective job at promoting this project. And for a lot of good reasons, we, um, we believed it because um, w there's a lot of people on this island that are quite aware of, we're, you know, the, well, our, our energy is very expensive out here. Um, times are a little tighter now than they have been uh, in the, over the past decade or so. Lobstering has slowed down. Um, it's harder for people to, to pay bills and a promise of a, a cheap energy source um, that was clean and green um, is a is a hard one to ignore and I think that's a very powerful selling. There were people that did stand up and raised concerns about this project. The Purriers were a couple of people, there a couple of people who, or a couple, um, who Colleen mentioned their post and beam home that is now unlivable um, who had planned to retire here and become a part of the community. They're fine people and they were very concerned about the windmills being in their backyard and did some uh, very intelligent and, and dynamic and involved research and found a lot of information that suggested that there was much more to this project than what was being presented to us. Um, they presented their information at town hall meetings and it seems as though all that information was pushed aside in 
mm, because of the excitement of the potential of this being so good for us as a community. And it's unfortunate because now we're, we're sort of, we're left with these repercussions which were all quite predictable. I, just as much as uh, so many other people, um, was really dismissive of um, uh, anyone who had anything negative to say about the wind turbines. I said, look, this is a good thing. This is the way of the future. This is what we need. This is so that my children, to use the phrase, mm. because my children were involved in the celebration and um, uh, you know, watched the whole thing and we've been so excited, so I've tried to maintain some of that. This is, this is to ensure that my children can come back to Vinyl Haven you know, as adults that, that, you know, I had heard from um, representatives, you know, we have the oceans are rising, we need to do something to combat this. This is uh, global warming, and this was our way, our own way to, to take part in that. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I um, am most frustrated by is that that feeling has been taken away. Mm -hmm. And I know that actually I was sort of a party to the dismissal of the of the possible, you know, uh, Ill, Ill impact of the turbines. And I was reassured at a meeting last spring by uh, George Baker, who was head of Fox Island Wind, that the, the sounds emitted from the wind turbines uh, would, at a thousand feet away from the site, be approximately 45 decibels, which is the sound of a quiet conversation in a living room. And I feel like a bit of a broken record because I've now said that and heard that so many times. Um, and that the ambient sounds from the, the sound of wind rustling and other ground sounds would effectively mask turbine noise past a thousand feet. At a little over a half a mile, when the turbines are running, I feel assaulted by a barrage of um, rhythmic low pulses that are inescapable. There is not a single place on my property where I can get free of this noise and it does not stop when the sun goes down. It continues through the night and it fills my home with this sound that I have to try my best to ignore when falling asleep. And um, it's very disturbing. But I mean there are there are, are actual other costs that other communities need to take into consideration. One of the things that I had asked was uh, and actually asked the, the president of Island Institute. He said, there have been studies that have shown that property values are not diminished near windmills. Well, I believed him. I thought, boy, there's a testament to how quiet they are. But instead, um, I find that these studies all deal with a five-mile radius from the turbines which are being studied. The sound really only goes about a mile, so you have, here we have a study that's looking at 80 square miles of real estate values, when the, really the only thing that's affected is about three square miles or, or one mile around. So, and if there are other studies that show within that mile, there's 26 to 40 percent diminution in property values. So in thinking about financing, I'm talking to the other communities here, in thinking about financing your projects, think about the costs that aren't just the, the loans and whatever, but basically you're asking the people who live within a mile to contribute a quarter, say a quarter of their real estate value to the project. 